Hey folks, how you doing? Today's lecture will focus on negative externalities. So by definition, externalities is a type of side effect consequence uh, made by two parties affecting a third party. And usually it depends on what type of externality. It could be a negative or it could be a positive one. So we want to focus on negative externalities and see the parties involved and what we call the cost that society is now responsible in paying as a result of two parties' transaction. So the first party we can focus on is the supply curve, that of the producers. Obviously, producers are responsible in producing goods, whether it be cigarettes or tobacco products. And the second party involved is the demand curve, what we call the consumers. And consumers are the ones who then purchase the products, the cigarettes and the tobacco goods. So when both parties interact and transact, we tend to see what we call a negative externality affecting the third party. And the third party is represented by society as a whole. This can include neighbors, your loved ones, people who uh, go to the same school as you. So these are society as a whole. So to illustrate this and what's happening, we have to see what's happening on the graph. So we can use a typical consumer market as such and draw on the x-axis the quantity of goods produced. Uh, we can label this the number of cigarettes produced by company X. On the y-axis, we can put the price, the price of cigarettes. So we can make up the numbers and say 100 cigarette sticks, 100 cigarette boxes, up to you at a price of, let's say, $10. Although I don't really know the actual price because I don't smoke myself. Here we have point A, where 100 cigarettes and $10 intersect point A. So now we can draw the supply curve for the party that is producing the goods itself. And the supply curve is going to be represented by this red upward sloping graph or curve known as the supply curve. After we have drawn the first party, now we can draw the demand curve, the second party, those who are consuming the cigarettes, you, me, neighbors, etc., those who are smokers. So what's happening here is when producers and consumers interact at point A, they don't understand or don't realize the impact they are making to the third party, to society as a whole. And now we can draw another uh, graph or curve, excuse me, that is now going to represent society. We can put here S sub society. So we tend to see that at point A, consumers who consume goods from producers don't understand that the impact they're making is far greater to society. Based on point A, we can then draw a dotted vertical line up to the supply society curve. And now I want you to see in this triangular area is what we call the cost that's now passed to society. So the best example of this would be when smokers purchases cigarette sticks from producers and when they inhale and exhale, they may not understand the power of secondhand, thirdhand smoking to society, especially to younger people. So this can represent the amount of money it's going to cost in order to have people infected, affected by secondhand smoking from consumers and producers. We can call this the negative externality. 
So one of the easiest ways to then hopefully reduce or eliminate the green triangle is by convincing smokers to consume less. But chances are is they are, they are not going to consume less because if you are a smoker, more than likely it might take a lot more time for you to quit smoking. So we can't really depend on the demand curve to reduce the number of cigarette sticks to consume. And this is kind of why when it comes to externalities, a good example to kind of create a sort of solution is through the government. Now, a government is able to pass laws, and certain laws could also either restrict or penalize producers when producing certain goods. One example of a power that government uh, has, uh, has on their, in their disposal is that of a tax. So when the government implements a tax, it's going to penalize the producers who are making that good, in this case, cigarettes. So what happens if a government increases tax, affecting the sales tax that producers are now going to uh, bear? Let's say at $10, that's point A, we can now see a tax of $2. Now we can see that whenever the producers are going to produce goods, they must pay a $2 tax back to the government. Now, in theory, a sales tax is going to become a disincentive for producers in wanting to produce more, so they should produce less when there's a tax implemented. So now we want to see what's going to happen when there is a $2 tax increase affecting producers. The $2 tax increase would now change the total amount from $10 to $12. $12 will now be the new price that producers would have to pay the $2 tax to the government. We can call this point point. B. And because it's a tax, we know in microeconomics that a tax will always shift supply to the left. And now we can call this S sub tax. So I want you to see how we shifted supply to the left. Now, more importantly, what's going to happen to this green triangle? after a tax. The tax is going to create now a smaller red triangle as you can see on the graph. So what's happening is the initial cost in green is now smaller in red. And actually it has been able to minimize the cost society would have to be responsible for, all because of a tax implemented by the government. Now we can also go one step further and actually measure these triangles, but what we need though is we need some numbers. So let me go ahead and put some numbers here. Let's make this point 17, this point here 15, this point here, 90, and that point here, 80. So once we have the number set, we can now look at the following areas. The first area is the green triangle. And this represents the cost that's passed to society at point A at point A. Now if you remember back in math, we remember the area of a triangle to be half times base times height. The green triangle has a base of 17 minus 10 
of 7, 17, minus 10, base of 7, and a height of 100, minus 80, 20, times half. 20 times 7 is 140, times half is 70. So now we can see how initially at point A, without the tax, there could be a cost of $70 per person to treat uh, who is affected, who, all, who will be affected from secondhand smoking. Now, because of the government imposing a tax of $2, we now have a red smaller triangle that we can now calculate. And this would be the cost passed to society at point B. Again, we have the area of the triangle as half times base times height. We know it's going to be half. But now look at the base of the red triangle. 15, well actually, actually I need to put another number there. Let's put 16 in between 15 and 17 to make it work. So now we're going to have 16 minus 12 which gives us 4 as the base, 16 minus 12 is 4. And now we're going to have a height of 90 minus 80, which gives us 10, a height of 10. 10 times 4 is 40, times half is 20. So what has happened was, after a tax of $2 by the government, the cost that's passed to society has decreased to $20 per person. So in essence, a tax is going to help decrease, minimize, and hopefully eliminate the negative externality that is created by both the consumers and the producers of cigarettes. Now to really eradicate this externality, we need to tax one more time. Supply needs to shift to the left one more time at 15. So to solve this, there has to be a tax of three more dollars in order to get to where we want to be, which is this point here, the demand curve and supply society, uh, which would be the optimal point.